there are some intangibles that those projections failed to take into consideration. The crowd was going crazy. And there's not much in life that's better than that. You're listening to Garlic Fries and Baseball Guys on the 95.7 The Game Podcast Network. Hey everyone, Sam Lubman here. Before we get into this conversation with Ryan Walker, I want to give a quick heads up about something. Uh, the microphone I used to record this episode was, let's just say, not very good. Uh, I won't be using it anymore, but that doesn't really help with this interview here. Uh, the mic I'm using, it, it doesn't really connect well with the cord that I have for it, so as a result, there's going to be some audio issues and some popping here and there. Uh, there's not really a whole lot I could do about it other than just not use the mic anymore, which, again, I'm not going to be doing. So... It's kind of a bummer for this episode. The pops aren't that loud, uh, and if you can get through them, you it should not take away what was a very, very good conversation with Giants rookie reliever Ryan Walker. So, without further ado, here is Ryan Walker on the Garlic Fries and Baseball Guys podcast. All right, hello there. Welcome back to the Garlic Fries and Baseball Guys podcast. Sam Lubman here being joined by uh, Giants rookie reliever Ryan Walker, former 31st round pick in the 2018 MLB draft out of Washington State. Uh, he's got a 2.45 ERA, 4-1 record so far this season, and uh, it's been quite a year for you, Ryan. Thanks for joining us today. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, so it's a, you've had quite a big year. You had your first big league call up. You got your first uh, big league appearance, your first big league win. You even got your first big league start. But I'm curious, does all that pale in comparison to what you did on Wednesday when you struck out Shohei Otani? <laughs> I mean, you know, in the long run, yes. Uh, having some success against Shohei was just you know icing on the cake um but other than that like the biggest thing for me was just making it here and being able to do what i can do here um you know show show is a great player like you know everyone gets him every once in a while you know and the next battle will come fun fun story to tell the grandkids though one day right for sure yeah i mean he's literally one of the best if not the best baseball player ever i mean he's incredible um it's just going to be so fun to be able to i'm saving that video for sure and, uh, you know, with uh, the utmost respect to him. Well, hopefully uh, you don't have a chance to face him again uh, after this season, if you know what I mean. But um, yeah. so, uh, you were called up on May 19th. Uh, why don't you just kind of tell us the story of just kind of how you found out that you were going to be called up to the big leagues. Uh, it was, uh, I was playing in Reno in AAA with, uh, obviously with the River Cats. Duh. Um, you know, it was first inning of the game. I get the someone calls on the walkie, or a pitching coach calls on the walkie and tells me to come down to the dugout, which I thought was kind of odd. And when I went down there, um, he came up to me and said, hey, you're going to be red today. You know, I hope that's fine with you. Like, you're not going to be throwing. I said, I don't have a choice. That's fine. Like, whatever you say. And they said, I just want you to know, you're not throwing today because you're going to be throwing in San Francisco tomorrow. I said, oh, okay, well, that makes things a lot better. You know, so I, got, I was really excited. What was funny, though, is nobody heard it. So it was like just me and the coaches getting excited. Everyone has no idea what's going on. So I had to, like, awkwardly go and say, hey, guys, I'll see you later. I got the call, you know, and then everyone celebrated and stuff. And uh, it was really cool. You know, I went down to the bullpen to grab my stuff to – head out and uh, the bullpen through a little celebration water everywhere that was super fun really appreciate those guys and made my way to san francisco that night so who was the first person who found out so aside from your teammates and with the river cats who was the first person you called to let them know that you're going to big leagues was it mom dad wife friend who, who got that first call well my dad was already there so he got the first call i told him to uh, walk over to the locker room because we have to leave you know so he was really excited and then my first call was uh my wife yeah um so when you first got here i remember you you kind of you warmed up a couple times but you didn't get into the game so what were those first few days you know for you like here at the big league level when you did kind of get up here what did you what was that kind of like oh snap i'm a big leaguer moment like for you like when did you have that moment just kind of walk us through you know what those first few days uh with the you know here at the big club were like Honestly, the biggest moment was, one, just getting here, um, being at the field, playing catch before the game, just seeing the stadium, um, realizing, like, dang, like, I'm finally here, you know, and then when the game started and you actually see it filled, and it's like, wow, like, this is pretty crazy, and especially, you know, how it is here, we get great fans and a lot of them, uh, so it was just a really good moment, um, obviously getting that first call to warm up, heart was pounding pretty good, um, and, uh, you know, uh, JP had to give me some breathing exercises down there because I was like, <laughs> you know, hyperventilating, like, all right, all right, you know, get in control here. And then, uh, yeah, obviously 
running out to the to the mound for the first time was was great. People tell you not to look up, but I, I looked up. You know, I'm taking in the moment, yeah. and uh, I was able to control my you know my uh, nerves and be able to get the job done, which was also fun to be successful in your debut. You mm -hmm. know, um, so yeah. Well, it's not just been your debut. It's been a lot throughout this season. Ryan Walker joining us here on the Garlic Fries and Baseball Guys podcast. Now, of course, one of the first things I noticed about you when you took the mound is you have a, a very different delivery yeah. uh, than we see from most pitchers at that crossfire delivery. Uh, again, yeah, you just don't see many pitchers do that. So when did you adopt that delivery? Uh, it just naturally came about. Um, it's always been semi-hard for me to go straight down the mound since college. I wasn't this extreme. I was just a little bit crossfire. Throughout the years, I don't know what happened i think my body was just like hey like this is how you're gonna throw and as i realized that i started to you know specify my workouts um to that delivery make sure everything's working good make sure everything's mobile along with strength and uh it's been a huge blessing for me it's kept me around the game you know and um just you know working towards my strengths yeah. Yeah, so was it kind of like easy to kind of figure out those mechanics then? Because you said you kinda, it kind of came naturally to you. So. Yeah, like, yeah, it came natural. So working on the mechanics wasn't necessarily a, a tough part, although it is exploited a little when there is something off um, because with the delivery, I feel like everything kind of has to be spot on for it to, to really work out. Um, but I think I've done a good job of managing that. Cool. Uh, Ryan Walker joining us here on the Garlic Fries and Baseball Guys podcast. So uh, since May 1st, so a couple weeks before you got here, you've been part of a really good bullpen. Uh, since that time, you guys have a 295 ERA as a unit, which is the best, far, by far the best in baseball. The Yankees are second in that time with a 326 ERA. Kind of talk about what, what makes this group that you're in here in this bullpen so special. I mean, we have so many different styles of pitching in that bullpen, and every single one of them can be in different roles and be successful wherever they're placed. Um, you know, obviously we have Tyler Rogers, you know, there's really nobody like him. Um, we've got, you know, Scotty with his, with his lefty sinker. Uh, we've got Mania. We've got all these different guys. We've got Tristan Beck who has five different pitches that he can throw in zone. Being able to use guys like that, um, in every situation, whether they need to open a game, whether they need to throw three innings or, you know, Manaya closed one game, you know, everyone's able to do that. So I think that's what really makes us special in there. And we, you know, we all have a good time down there and, you know, respect each other. And obviously enjoying our time around one another also makes it a little easier. Yeah, so I mean, obviously you kind of mentioned, you know, Manaya closing, you know, you've been opening and stuff. There's been like so many different roles that you guys have had in the bullpen. Is it kind of hard knowing kind of like going into a, a, a game like you know when am I going to be coming in what's my job be tonight am I going to be a feature guy am I going to be coming in you know just in the eighth inning uh, is, is it kind of hard just as a group kind of knowing what anyone's going to be doing on any given night or do you guys kind of have a feeling like you know what hey going into any game we're, we're prepared for whatever comes I'd say we're pretty prepared for whatever comes you know people do have their specific roles obviously Doobie's never going to throw before the ninth or eighth if there's a save situation usually Taylor Tyler are usually seven eight nine guys um but even then, so they've come in earlier. Um, it's really not a problem at all. There's really no difference. You know, we go out and do do our thing, whether it's the first, second, third, or eighth and ninth. It doesn't really matter, you know. So that's what's been great about it. Yeah. So obviously, you've done you know you've done a lot of great success uh, being used as the opener. Uh, talk about you know so when when Brebbia comes goes down, they come to you. They ask you to be the opener. What was that conversation like? They just asked me if I'd be. Uh, if I've ever done it before, I said, yeah, I did it a couple times in AAA. And I said, all right, you're, you know, you want it tomorrow? I said, yeah, sure, you know, I, and I did it. And so I'm just, they didn't have to talk you into it at all? No, no, they didn't have to talk to me. I mean, I'm going to do whatever they say, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a fresh. I guess, yeah, you're a rookie. Uh, you ask I'm like, I ain't going to say no, you know. <laughs> but, no, in all seriousness, like, I was excited for it, you know, just uh, – I think the biggest thing for me was not realizing how cool of a situation that is, you know. Um, so after doing it a couple times, you know, I started liking it more and realizing it's a it's a pretty cool position to be in, that they trust you to get through that first, second, third inning, whatever they need. Um, and so really it didn't take much convincing. I was I was down for what they needed me for.
So at the beginning, they had you doing like one inning at a time early on, but now they have you going about like deeper into games. Was that always the plan or did you come out after one inning one day and you're like, hey, I can kind of go a little bit more? Like, like, how did it get to the point where you were extending yourself to go deeper into these games? Honestly, I don't know. I'm not usually, you know, I'm not really a part of those conversations. You know, that's up to them to figure out. And, uh, you know, I think when you do it one time or a couple times, they can see that you can do it. And then you start doing it a little more. Um, coming in after each inning, you know, I don't, I don't necessarily know if they're going to say you're going back out or that's it. Uh, you just always go in thinking you're going to go into the next inning. Um, there was maybe only one time where they were thinking about not bringing me back out. And they, they asked me, they said, how do you feel? Do you want it? I said, you know, yeah, give me a second. Thought about it, went back out. Um, but most of the time, you know, that's to their discretion. And I just always expect to go back out. So how far in advance do you know when you're going to be starting? Because obviously, like us here in, in the rest of the world, you know, we're sometimes finding out, you know, night before day of that you'll be on the mound. Do you have like more kind of heads up like, hey, you know, on this day, two or three days from now, you're going to be the starter or what, like when do they are they are they pretty good at letting you know when you're going to be the starter versus, you know, just coming out of the bullpen? Yeah, they're pretty good at it. Um, you know, they usually bring it up to your attention um, and, you know, it's it's never set in stone when they do bring it to your attention. They just want you to know that you're, you know, you're possible, you're a possible option for it. And then, you know, obviously it doesn't come official until the day of when they post the rosters or whatever they do. And, um, but yeah, they're usually pretty good at giving a heads up at least a day or two before maybe. So what's your, your kind of pregame routine like on days you're opening versus days that you're just coming out of the bullpen? I try and treat it like a bullpen, like a bullpen day, like a, like I'm coming out in the seventh. If it's a four o'clock game, or four or five, whatever. You know, they do the anthem 13 minutes before. I'll be out there right at the anthem, and I'll warm up 10 minutes before the game and, and run in from the bullpen. You know, I don't try and change up my routine and be this, have the starter routine or anything because that's just not me. I think it kind of gets in my head a little, so I just treat it as if I'm going in the seventh or eighth. Ryan Walker joining us here on the Garlic Fries and Baseball Guys podcast. Make sure you're liking, rating, reviewing, subscribing. So, uh, Ryan Corsio, you went to Washington State. You're a Pac-12 guy. Have you been cat, uh, keeping up to date with any of the Pac-12 realignment, all the teams leaving, stuff like that? Not so much. Um, I've obviously noticed when, you know, the news is out, you know, with, with uh, teams leaving and stuff, it's been kind of wild. I don't know what's going to happen with Washington State. I don't know where they're going to go. I don't know if anything's been announced or anything, but... Uh, you know, I hope whatever happens, they find a good league and, you know, they stick with the competition that they had before. Yeah, so you've, you know, since you've been up here, this Giants have done a lot of traveling this season, uh, and you've been a part of a lot of that travel as well. Uh, you know, some of the, the realignment they're doing with these conferences, it'll have, you know, these West Coast schools playing, you know, like Rutgers or Virginia Tech or, you know, every now and then yeah. uh, with these schedules. Think about the traveling you've done this year. Imagine that travel maybe kind of for, for a college kid, you know, who's, who's pitching. Would that be more difficult compared to the travel you had to do when you were with Washington State? In a sense, probably, because, you know, they're traveling a lot farther distances more often. When we traveled far distances, it's usually only because, you know, we're in a, doing a preseason game and we're going to go to Texas or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, it might be a little more rough. The good thing about that is that they do have those five days in between when they're at school to – you know, rest and recover for whatever travel day is about to come up, which is nice. Um, but yeah, I'd say it's definitely going to be a little bit more difficult than traveling within conf conference and only going to California, Oregon, you know, Utah, whatever. So obviously, I mean, a big part of college, you know, sports is the rivalries. What were those Washington, Washington State baseball games like? I mean, obviously, you hear about how big those football games are. I'm sure that rivalry translates to the diamond as well. Yeah, for sure. I mean, in Washington State, at Washington State, it's usually, you know, our crowds aren't the biggest only because it's so freezing there. I mean, it's cold. A lot of people didn't want to go, you know, and that's fine. But going to UW, there was definitely more Coug fans than there were Husky fans, you know. Um, and it was just so fun being able to go to our rivals and feel like that's almost our home court because everyone's a Coug, you know. Uh, so it's always, it's always a fun time. Ryan Walker here joining us on the Garlic Fries and Baseball Guys podcast. So since you've been called up, have you had any chance to kind of explore the city of San Francisco at all? Yeah, you know, I've been here a few times previously because my wife's from here and stuff, so we've done a lot of exploring. Um, 
a lot of great restaurants out here. I just went out to House of Prime Rib right. yesterday, and it's freaking amazing. So anyone that needs to go anywhere, House of Prime Rib should be on top of your list. Uh, great place to go, great service, um, and the food is just incredible. Uh, being able to go to places like Sausalito and all that kind of the cool little quaint towns like that has been really cool. Um, so definitely done some exploring to an extent, um, but there's only so much you can do, you know, during season. So yeah. So you, when you do have the occasional off day, you know, here at home, what what do you like to do when you do have the off day here in San Francisco? Uh, you'll typically find me on the golf course if I don't have family in town. Um, you know, fun to get out there, kind of just take your mind away from baseball for a day and just go out and relax and enjoy your time yeah where do you like to play golf at i'm trying to go all over the place you know i've haven't golfed here much obviously so let's see yesterday i think we went to half moon bay yeah we went to half moon bay which was really cool super nice um and you know just whatever opportunity arises you know try and get on to some nice courses whenever we can and and uh, go check out the scenery. It's been really beautiful out here. Yeah, so who else here in this clubhouse is also a big golfer? Honestly, a lot of guys. You know, a lot of pitchers for sure since we don't have to swing, you know. Um, you know, Taylor, Tyler Rogers, big golfers. Um, uh, Alex Berg, our bullpen catcher, big golfer, you know. So it's, we have plenty of guys to be able to go with, Patrick Bailey. Who has the worst golf swing on the team? <laughs> worst golf swing on the team. Man, with the guys that I've golfed with, me. <laughs> I don't compare to them, so I, yeah, unfortunately that's, that would be me. Yeah, how long uh, How long have you been golfing? When did you take it up? I've been golfing for a long time. You know, I'm not bad, you know. I try to typically sit around mid-80s, okay, but, you know, good. some days I'll be in the 90s, you know. Um, it's just, it's always day by day, but you got guys like Alex Berg who are super consistent, and they're shooting 70s all the time, you know, and it's just like, you know. It's great. It's fun to play with, but it uh, definitely makes you feel like you aren't that good at golf. <laughs> yeah, how often are you able to bring your sticks on the road with you? I don't. My, mine are in Sacramento still. Mm. Yeah, so I've been borrowing all these clubs. I don't have my own clubs. And, and so I think yesterday I didn't have a bag. I just had a set of irons. So it's been, uh, it's been tough being able to um, get those down here. I just haven't really found the time. Um, but, you know, it's all for fun anyway. Yeah, well, hopefully someone get the rest of your clubs out here soon then so we can get your full game up. You mentioned House of Prime Rib uh, is doing this in the city. Uh, what do you kind of like to eat? Burrito guy, burger guy. Uh, when, when, when you're craving something, what's like your go-to craving meal? Go-to craving meal. Um, you know, it's pretty tough. I don't really know because I like to try a bunch of different things. Uh, Limon and um, on Mission Street is a Peruvian restaurant. That's, that place is super good. Um, I mean, I would kind of wish, I don't know if there's a Cane's out here, but typically if I'm going to be craving something, it's usually Cane's, you know, if I'm craving Cane's. something bad, yeah. I, I don't know if there is one out here. I think out here either, I think, is it like a East Coast chain? Or no, yeah. it's got to be up uh, in, in the Pacific Northwest too, right? Well, I mean, I live in Arizona now, and there's tons okay. down there, but yeah, I think it does primarily stay on the East Coast. So. Cool. Um, what else do I get into? So yeah, so w what else? So what else do you kind of like to do? Are you, are you a movie guy at all? What kind of movies do you like? Also, Original Joe's is bomb, too. Oh, I've read that a few times as well. Yeah, that's Original Joe's. Um, sorry, would you say movies? Yeah, are you a movie guy at all? Are you a show guy? Um, I don't really typically go out to the movies too much. Um, but uh, TV shows are typically our thing. Right now, I'm in the Walking Dead series. I started a long time ago, but then just restarted again um, on season nine. Really back into that trying to finish out the whole thing it's a long series um but movie wise you know i don't know we don't we don't really watch a ton it's usually some netflix horror movie you know yeah, that you're heard of yeah yeah my wife and i both like horror movies oh well, there you go what are your favorite horror movies uh, the conjuring is a great one annabelle is a great one uh as above so below is good you know there's there's quite a few good ones i, I enjoy the conjuring ones too and they got that whole universe i've I haven't gone all of them yet but yeah. No, those are great ones there. Um, Ryan Walker here joining us on the Garlic Fries and Baseball Guys podcast. We'll get you out of here right now. I've given us a lot of your time, so I really appreciate that. Um, just before you go, what's the what's the best advice that you've been given by a coach so far in your career? Or just because it doesn't have to be a coach, just best advice just in general. Best advice in general? Um, honestly, some of the best advice has just been with some of my teammates. Um, uh, one of my good friends, Taylor Rashi, throughout minor leagues, uh, JJ Santa Cruz, guys like that that just really remind me to stay confident in myself because I've, I've really struggled with that, you know. Um, 
that's that's really it. Like them just telling me to be confident, like saying, "Hey, you're good." Like you need to go out there and trust that you're good. Um, you know, be a little arrogant at sometimes on the mounds, you know, and know that you're the best. But it's you know, it's just not really my strong point. Um, and so being put to the test by them is, has been the biggest jump for me, and that's really what's improved my year this year. Awesome. Well, I can definitely say the uh, the numbers say it, and the eye test says it too. You have been dominating on the mound. It's been great watching this year. It's been fun watching you and all these other rookies breaking onto this club and really just making your impact. So hopefully that keeps going for you. It's been a joy to watch you uh, on the mound, Ryan, and thank you very much for joining us on the podcast today. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me on here.